Hi everybody, Andrew Fantasia here to talk about the latest Marvel United Multiverse update because a bunch of stuff less than day one because day one was just out of sight but still quite a nice bunch of stuff has come out. Now I know I'm late to the party on some aspects of this and I'm also early to the party on some other ones because I have to record this late Sunday night. It's the only chance I got and I know tomorrow there's supposed to be something else Something big that Simon promised might get revealed on Monday, but I won't be able to cover that on Monday. So let's just recap how the weekend has gone and how Friday has gone. And uh, we'll just talk about what's next whenever we can. Maybe Tuesday we'll be back with another video. But for now, let's see what stretch goals we've uncovered. When last we left off, we unlocked Crossbones, or rather we revealed Crossbones, and then we ended up unlocking him. So Crossbones is in the game now as a villain. Right after that, they threw, well, for me at least, a curveball because they gave us a mutant guy named Cypher, and I was just like, I don't know. I don't know who this guy is. He's got a warlock arm. He's got a sword, which a lot of these stretch goal people have for some reason. This sword happy game right now. And a lot of people are saying that Cypher is a deep, deep, deep cut into the mutant part of the Marvel Universe. And I'm like, okay, great. We, we got mutants coming in too. Why not? Mix it all up. Have a nice, healthy garden salad of these characters. Well, it turns out Mutants has kind of just been the theme here going forward, as we'll see. It took a while to unlock Cypher because the momentum of the first day died down, but then that momentum picked up because Helena and Andrea and Tiago from Simon came out with a video on Friday at noon talking about what had happened and what was coming up next in the campaign. And they revealed the first of what I hope is several expansions here, War of Kings. This pretty much is the Inhumans expansion. This is all the Inhumans stuff that we've been waiting for in this game. So right away, you look at this box. I don't know about you, but you know what I see when I look at this box? I see a whole bunch of checkmark names from my wish list because this box is so far the biggest expansion box in terms of what you're getting inside that we have ever seen. We've got nine characters in this expansion box. One more and it would be a core set. That's how huge this is. Remember, back in season one, we were getting expansion boxes that had like four characters in them if we were lucky. The fact that we can have this as just an expansion, that tells me that the sky really is the limit with this campaign. And also the fact that the banner isn't a multiverse banner and it's not a Fantastic Four banner, it's just a War of Kings banner. And that's something that I brought up in the last video about whether these banners were things that we would see as sort of a grab bag because uh, of, of the nature of this multiverse campaign. And it looks like that's gonna be the case because whatever the next thing is, it's probably not gonna have the War of Kings banner on it. So looking at this right away, it's just all the inhuman goodness you, you, well, maybe not all the inhuman goodness you would want, but more on that later. But look who's in it. There's Black Bolt, there's Medusa, there's Crystal, there's Gorgon, and there's Triton and there's Karnak and Lockjaw. That's seven heroes right there. And six of them were on this guy's wish list. So let's go ahead and check them all off now. I didn't have Karnak on my list because I forgot he existed. There's also an anti-hero gladiator who's going to have this really cool sort of honor-bound dual dynamic. Beautiful gladiators and anti-hero. We need more of those anyway. And then Vulcan rounding out things as the villain of the box. And he was like the toughest henchman in season two. So the idea of fighting him is just making me physically ill right now, but he's in this box. And that just turns this gorgeous, gorgeous piece of expansion artwork into the best value for your buck that I think Simon has given us in across all three seasons of this game. Plus you get a nifty little purple cube. You get all these beautiful cards. You get these water tokens. You get this crystal figure. Look at her. Look at crystal. There's fire and there's water on that thing. Helena was 100% right when she told me, just you wait and see what kind of translucent effects you're getting on these minis, because this is what she's talking about right here. Black Bolt and Medusa are apparently going to have this thing where they work well together because they're a married couple. Medusa is also going to have connections to the Fantastic Four. On my list, I thought she was going to be an anti-hero. Shows what I know because I'm literally only going off the fact that a trading card I have of her from the TV show 
since she was a villain. I need to stop thinking of the TV shows and just start thinking of the comics because they know better than I do. Crystal's going to have water tokens and she's going to put up barriers with rocks. She's basically a waterbender, a firebender, and an airbender. Gorgon's going to stomp a lot of things. Triton's going to probably use water too. This is just a beautiful set. And naturally, as soon as it got released, boom. Money went up, Cypher got unlocked, and right after Cypher, we unlocked the first stretch goal anti-hero, which is another mutant by the name of Dakin? Dakin? I don't know how to say his name, because these are more deep cuts. This is uh, Wolverine's son, and sometimes he's a bad guy, and sometimes he's a good guy, and sometimes he's a neutral guy. That's why he's purple, and he's got a claw coming out of one of his elbows. He's clearly not a very happy person. I didn't know he existed either, but I saw tons of people saying his name, not only in these comments, but in last season's comments. So if you want a Dakin or Dakin, there you go. You're happy now. You got your first stretch goal anti-hero. The next one they revealed and eventually unlocked was this guy, Chamber, who's another mutant. He's supposed to be from Generation X, if I'm remembering right what I heard and what I had to look up afterwards. He's got no mouth and no innards. He's just like a big fire thing inside a man, which is kind of a horrifying and neat concept, but that's who this man is. And he's another mutant and another deep cut from the mutant pocket. So it really feels like with the stretch goal box, they're digging through the leftovers from season two. At this point, I'm starting to think, you know, okay, cool. I love these obscure characters that I've never heard of. I'm glad to have them. But if you're going to have Cypher and Chamber and leave out people like Scorpion and Mephisto, like that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but I'm, I have patience. This is a long campaign and we're still only in the first steps. I just, I really hope that this stretch goal box is like this thick, if it's going to include all the people I want to see. But speaking of people I wanted to see after Chamber, we got the last of the Inhumans, at least the last of the Inhumans that I'm aware of, the villain, Maximus the Mad, who did I have on my list? You bet your sweet inhuman butt I had him on my list, so let's cross him off, which means all the inhumans on my list are here. We got them all. I'm a happy man right now. What's next? Captain Britain, the Betsy Braddock version of Captain Britain. So this is an alternate skin, I guess you could say, or a variance. I don't know the story, but... I'm going to assume alternate skin, which is not my favorite. And it's another mutant, which is not exactly where my heart is going. But I'm not going to sit here and complain about it because it's a cool mini or not. And I'm sure she's going to come with a lot of cool stuff. She's got a sword too and a little shield. The shield looks great. Uh, and I know there are people out there who love this character and who are happy to see her. So I don't want to take away from any of those people's joy. I'm glad you got your Betsy Braddock version of Captain Britain. Now she can team up with her brother and they can be two times the British. They can have a Worcestershire sh update, but please don't have that. They also came out with this interesting little gem, which is generic item cards as a stretch goal. Obviously, this is not something that got anybody's blood pumping, but it is something that I think a lot of people were intrigued about and curious about, and now we know they exist. They're just these little generic things, and there's two of each of them and there's only four so it's not like you get a whole chunk of these but if you have a hero and you want to use equipment but that hero doesn't have equipment you know somebody like the hulk doesn't tend to carry things around in his pockets you can give him one of these a makeshift weapon or a makeshift armor and it's just something it's a generic little something for them to carry around adds a bit of variety and flavor especially that makeshift weapon i like that it looks like something you know it's, it's like Jackie Chan would pick it up in a warehouse because he just sees it and he's like, I can use this as a weapon. That looks resourceful. It tells a story just by existing. So I like this. I'm still not 100% sure how often I would use these, but I like them. Then it did an interesting thing. They um, came out with this guy, Iron Patriot, who I didn't know this whole Norman Osborn shenanigans thing. Again, I am so outside the loop of comics that I don't even live in the same municipality as that loop. He's got this Iron Patriot costume, which I had no idea was a thing, and he starts what's called the Cabal, which is a group of really high tier villains. And even though the mini you're getting is Iron Patriot, the villain card 
says Cabal. And it works in a very unique way, kind of similar to what Legion had going on, where he's going to start as your villain, and all the henchmen are also big names like Loki and, and Doctor Doom and whatever. And at any given point, it sounds like they can flip over and they become the main villain, the leader of the Cabal. And you have to switch gears and stop going after Iron Patriot and start going after them. And it switches again and again. It, this looks very, very different from anything we've ever seen. I think it's kind of cool, but again, it's a skin to me, at least. It's just Green Goblin wearing a different skin. I like the fact that we have this Iron Patriot looking mini, but definitely not somebody I put on my wish list and not something that gets me as excited as perhaps something that comes up next, which is Speed. And even Speed was not on my list because he's not from the pocket of characters I was looking for, but he's a young Avenger. He is Scarlet Witch's son, so he is connected to a whole bunch of stuff. He's not too outside of the uh, box here, but he's also a fresh new character. So of course that's going to get me excited to see Speed. And of course he can't have Speed without need. And by that I mean his brother, Wiccan, who was not the next character to be revealed. As of the time I'm recording this, they literally just unlocked Speed and the next character on the list uh, 50,000 away, so this is going to take some sweet time, unless whatever happens tomorrow is a bombshell, is Dark Child. Dark Child excites me because she's an anti-hero, and we only have one of those in this box so far. And then she doesn't excite me because she's a skin. She's just magic, but in a different costume, and now she's kind of bad. But then she excites me again because she's got this limbo location, but then she doesn't excite me again because the Limbo location isn't the full location. It's a card. It's very weird. They're doing a lot of really cool creative things with the villains, though, and I am liking how they're tackling this. This is just... I hate sounding like a broken record, but it's just like, okay, a character that... This slot in this box, of which there are only so many slots in this, however big this box is going to be, you know, that could have been Agatha Harkness if you wanted a villain who also used supernatural things and had connections to the underworld instead of dark child who again is somebody i've never heard of and a mutant if you're a like deep cut d tier mutant fan this stretch gold box must be your dream come true and i don't want to take that away from you so enjoy this i hope you're salivating over it the way i was salivating over titania and abomination back on day one i just can't wait to get that kind of saliva in my mouth again and i did with the inhumans box and I have a feeling whatever happens tomorrow, if something happens tomorrow, that could be a complete lie. But if it does, I hope it puts me back on the saliva train, baby. So that's where we're at right now. They literally just unlocked speed. Dark Child is the next one to go. Maybe tomorrow, if we get something big, we will end up unlocking her as well. Uh, today, the, the speed unlocking was helped by this new playmat, which got revealed. And I was kind of looking forward to the playmat because I wanted to get a second one just in case anything happened to the first one. But this one is smaller. It doesn't have the timeline on it, which makes sense. Some people said the first one was too big and they have a smaller playing area. It's too bad though, because I really like the idea of having a purple playmat, but I like having the timeline, or the storyline rather. I like having that on the mat. That kind of, to take that away kind of defeats the purpose of the mat for me. So I don't know 100% if this play mat is going to be something I would want to get. But to those people who wanted and needed a smaller one, there you go. This is great news for you. So exciting stuff. Tomorrow, what could possibly be happening? If I had to make a prediction, I don't know. Um, it's the second expansion if it's an expansion at all that they would be talking about so it's either going to be something really mind-blowing or really middling because they're still pacing themselves so let me hedge my bets and say and i know this is such an obvious choice here but let me say it's something to do with the eternals because that could go either way it could be incredibly disappointing because a lot of people just don't care about the eternals or it could be mind-blowing for people like me who are like, yes, please, all the Eternals. I think that's something that would get people just excited enough for some of the bigger reveals later in the campaign. And it would definitely bump up enough of the stretch goals to at least get Dark Child out of the way and hopefully reveal somebody next in the line. Hopefully somebody with a big forehead whose name rhymes with Schmashmeter. 
or even Mephisto at this point. Like, honestly, what are we waiting for? Why do we keep pretending Mephisto doesn't exist? So that's where we're at with Marvel United Multiverse. That's where I'm at with it. That's where you're at with it. That's where everybody's at with it until tomorrow. Who knows what will happen? Or unless some miracle happens tonight and in the next, you know, 45 minutes, everybody's like, ooh, Dark Child, I'm going to buy Playmats galore just so we can unlock her. But uh, I, I'm feeling confident that more of my wish list is going to get checked off. It's only a matter of time. Even if it doesn't, I'm still going to walk away happy because so far, we're still so early in this campaign and look how much greatness we already have. So thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate you following along with us on this wishlist journey. We'll see you all next time for whatever is next in the Master Plan.